back i know i understand it's been a while uh, a lot of you are very mad at me and i've heard all about it i'm sorry uh things have changed in my life and i'm gonna talk about that tonight so that we can get on to more important fucking things than why i've been absent on a hiatus for about two months in between episodes so essentially what happened um is i had a fork in the road so to speak i had to make a decision about my life my happiness and my sanity uh, as many of you do in your lives you have these decisions to make it's not a foreign concept for you to sit there and be like why does he have those things happen you could have them too we all have those fucking things that happen and for me it just so happened happened it was at the end of 2020, um, and it involved a lot of my businesses, involved a new opportunity that I decided to take. Uh, so because I took that, the opportunity, the opportunity that was presented to me, uh, it required me to move to Arkansas. So here I am, and I'll explain to you uh, what happened uh, to get me to this place where it took two months to fucking put an episode out. But first, I would have started with Release the Kraken, but I already cracked the fucking can because I like the party, you know what I'm saying? It feels so good going down once it touch your lips. Now, you have to forgive me if I feel, if it, it seems like this is a little bit different. Um, it's because I'm a little rusty. Uh, this is why I'm doing this episode, to get my fucking feet underneath me. You know, like I got these, right now I got these duck feet that's like, you know, a little bit weird. Maybe a platypi. I'm walking around all weird and shit. I'm just trying to get my fucking legs wet again with the podcasting because I know you guys enjoy it. Enjoy it. Um, so... In this episode, I'm just going to describe what I went through over the past little while. So essentially, I took a, an opportunity that brought me out to Arkansas, which by the way, uh, I'm going to describe this place as we get through this episode. We're going to do this together. Uh, I'm going to describe what Arkansas is uh, and what it isn't and all things in between. There's a lot of misconceptions about this place, and hopefully I don't ruin it for the residents that are here. Uh, hopefully this doesn't make any of you want to come here and probably won't because it's just like, oh, it just sounds like a regular place. But what I discovered is this place is magical and I'll explain why uh, later on. But I'd like to start my tale, my little adventure, by journeying back to the fucking Narnia, Washington. That dumpster fire of a fucking place. Um, so... You know, you've seen me talk or you've heard me talk about um, leaving the state of Washington Washington to go do something, but I never got into what that is. And I'm, I'm not going to on this episode. I know there's a lot of people that are curious. Some people I have told what I do aside from Washington, but I'm not going to get into that because I don't think it matters. Um, so for the past six years, I've been leaving Washington to go do jobs. Uh, do it you know i've been doing i've been basically like consulting uh i've been a liaison for a certain company that i won't get into um and doing other stuff within the company that's you know requires certain skill sets to um to be a part of and work for them um and, and it was a it was a great uh you know a great way to add some income on top of all of the other shit that you've seen me do over the years. Um, and it was a enjoyable, it was an enjoyable position and a enjoyable, you know, work environment, good teams, all that stuff. And so 
I would leave Washington to go take part in, uh, and help this uh, company grow. Um, so it was about the end of 2020. Uh, I have, you know, my other companies and stuff, like one of them wasn't doing good. It was like one of my primary sources of income. And it wasn't doing good just because COVID fucked up, as you can imagine, as some of you have experienced. It didn't fuck up the orders and the, and the stuff I was doing with it. It fucked up the supply lines in such a huge way. In such a massive way that it just it became... It, it went to a place where I was not enjoying myself whatsoever. I was, I was having such a bad time with it. Um, mentally, I was, it was like, I was just trying to figure out how to make, how to speed things up. And I couldn't, and I think I've talked about this on another podcast, but it's been a minute since I've done podcasts. So I'll just fucking do it again. Right. Um, but any long story short, it was like, it was such a fucking mentally fucked up time for me, uh, that coincidentally in that time I was offered to, uh, to go do some, do something else with this company that I've been working for and working with for better part of six years now that I was like, fuck it. I need to change things up. Like my headspace is co- totally fucked up. Not just because of the, 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 my business kind of getting screwed over with some of the stuff going on with COVID, but just in general, I had a lot of stuff going on in my life that was just, it felt like a, just, uh, you know, I'm a pretty resilient person, but it was almost to a place where I was like, I don't even know how long I can keep this up. Like, what am I going to do next? Um, so again, while the amount of like the amount of money coming in wasn't like a real factor. I've always done once I figured out how to make money is just independently. That wasn't really the biggest issue. It was mostly my sanity. And I started looking at money different. It was money to me became a place of, or a thing of like, it, it gives me a little bit of, it gives me security, but it, it doesn't make me happy, right? Like I'm paying my bills, I'm padding my bank account, but it doesn't make me fucking happy. And so I made, it was about 2020, especially like a lot of us get introspective about like what, what's going on in our, you know, personal lives. And for me, I started to discover 2019, the end of 2019 and specifically over 2020 where I had to sit and like think about, what I want to do when I grow up. I, I like, I analyzed my situation. It's like, if I, if it takes this amount of work to make this amount of money, um, and it doesn't make me happy regardless of how little I work, how much money I make, like how much I work, how much, how little money, like it's very American to look at money as like the source of happiness. And to some respect it is because you can't like, they say you can't buy happiness, but you can't buy a fucking jet ski with, with no money. You know what I mean? Uh, I, I looked at all of this stuff that was going on and I just, I had to fucking analyze what was, what would, what would make me happy. And so I, I looked at personal relationships, my, my son, how am I going to make his life better? Because when he's happier and he's not all fucking pissed off at whatever, or like he's doing well, uh, mentally and physically, um, he's just a general peach to be around. Um, and then to, regardless of, you know, you've heard me, I'm divorced, but to make, to like help his mother out because if, and, and like, uh, help her get into a good place in life. And, and in turn that helps him be happier because she's doing well and it, it makes my life better. And so I focused a lot on my personal relationship with not just my son, uh, his mother. And, but I also looked at friends like where, like how can I be, more effective and better for my friends. And it essentially boiled down to how do I become happier? Because if I'm a happier person and I'm like 
you know, all upbeat and shit. While me being kind of an abrasive dick is good for business, and it always has been, right? Because, like, people are naturally drawn to that because, like, oh, what's going to happen next? Um, it didn't hap- It didn't really help my personal relationships with people. So, essentially, I narrowed it down to, like, um, how do I be the best person for these people that are in my circle or I involve in my life? And it was becoming a better human by being happier. I'm about to sneeze. Um, so, so with that, I, I had to make a few hard decisions. And one of them was like, I leave some of them behind for the time being. And those relationships aren't dead just cause you, cause I move across the country, but, and that goes for everybody. Like, I think there's a lot of people that just go, that will leave and think that relationships are over. I'll tell you this, like when I made the decision to fucking take this opportunity, I looked at it like in such a fucking way that was like, I know this is going to drastically improve not only my, such my personal life, but it's going to improve others and not, not financially, but in, in just my happiness and my sanity. So it was really hard to make the decision. But once I did, there was a lot of other things that came from it and like hurdles I had to get over. And once, and it was almost like I'm making this decision, but it's not like, I don't want to fucking make this decision. I don't want to fucking say yes to this. Everything in me is saying to, to stay in the same fucking position I'm in, stay in the, you know, just keep fucking doing what you're doing. It's working, right? but I'm not fucking happy regardless of how much money came in. Like how it just wasn't working. So, um, you know, I, I knew that there was going to be hard hardships along the way. And like these hurdles that were presenting themselves, like, Oh, this isn't going to work. And it, so anyway, I'm kind of all over the place, right? Like that, if you've listened to this podcast or any time, I'm just, I'm shooting these brain ropes out and, Hopefully something comes out of it. <laughs> I'm tugging at the fucking the tube of life and hopefully the fucking brain ropes shoot out. Oh. But um eventually I was like, fuck it. It's much like business. You gotta take a chance and see what happens. And if all else fails, I'll just fucking go back to what I was doing, right? So uh the decision was made to move to Arkansas and it was a very, and honestly, like I make it sound like it's a fucking long process, but it was a very abrupt, like you have a certain amount of time to get here, all that stuff. And so it wasn't like years in the making. It was a a few months. And then eventually it was like, Oh, this is happening. Uh, and, and so essentially I had a week to pack to get everything in line, my, my, uh, my sit, make my situation, uh, you know, just, just pack your car up and fucking head across the country in a week. And so that's what I did. I left my house, um, left most of my shit in Washington and I packed up my car and, uh, I won't get into all the, the, the stuff about what was happening during the week and the emotional fucking toll it took on me that it continued to take across the country. And even while I was here in, in Arkansas, the emotional like stuff that came from it, cause it doesn't fucking matter. Right. But so I eventually packed all my shit up, put a lot of stuff in storage that those motherfuckers are still charging me for. Of course, I don't like that bill every month, but fuck it, whatever. But I left everything and I packed up, you know, they say, uh, there's like, like things. I packed up everything. I, I packed a suitcase and I went across the country. It's like, I literally fucking did that. Minus like my suitcase was a car and I drove to what seemed as an endless fucking journey across the United States States. And you like you fucking, when you drive across the country and I didn't even make it across the country, I went to fucking Arkansas, which is 
which for all the people that have been messaging me all this positive shit about being in the fucking Midwest, Arkansas is not in the Midwest. It's the fucking South, you dumb fucks. And I say that with all due respect. But Arkansas is not the Midwest, all right? It's the South. I don't know why I'm so passionate about that, but it's just like, it's like when people keep saying the fucking same wrong thing, it just shows a general like, Oh, this is an ignorant thing about the United States. Like, people think Arkansas is in the I never would have thought that Arkansas was in the fucking Midwest. Oklahoma, maybe. But even Oklahoma is considered the South. Um, you can Google that shit and fucking fact check me. But Arkansas, for sure, is not in the fucking Midwest. Although we are in Tornado Alley. And that's uh, considered to be a part of the Midwest. Uh, which I'll get into later. Tornadoes. I'm going to write that down. Just don't, I don't fuck that up. Okay. Tornadoes. Strike Force Energy is a fucking fantastic fucking drink. You know, you get that shit and you fucking wake up in the morning. You know, it came in on the fucking Pony Express. You know, Paul Revere himself, if he was alive, he would have brought that shit right into your fucking suck hole. He'd take the fucking pump bottle, insert it into your face, and smash the top so you get that fucking uh, natural flavor enhancer in your body. Now, I don't know if it's natural, but it sure as hell tastes like it belongs in my body. And it should be long in your body, too. So go ahead, go to StrikeForceEnergy.com and use code EVILVIBES at checkout and you get 20% off all of the shit that they have on their store. That includes fucking water bottles to put Strike Force Energy in. It involves hats, cats. I don't know if they sell cats, but they probably, probably should, you know? Get those, get fucking as hyped as you can on fucking Strike Force Energy like a cat on catnip, speaking of which. And with, you know, the hustle and bustle of busy life, why would you waste time going to the fucking gas station or the grocery store to get you a, a fucking energy drink when you could just have that shit on your counter ready to go? You get the, the pump bottle, you get the fucking packets, you squirt that shit in water, boom, you're fucking done and off to the races. Anyway, go to StrikeForceEnergy.com, use code EVILVIBES for 20% off your entire order of Strike Force Energy! to write down a whole bunch of shit i've actually got a whole bunch of episodes built up like this book right here that you see i uh, day to day i and just to give you an idea about how i do these episodes or whatever like i have this notebook with me or generally in reach unless i'm doing something else um it, it's generally in reach i can just when i think of something i'll go write something down and that's how i for a while i've operated on like just ideas and whatever i always have something that's like a standard center location that i could go write stuff down a lot of it's gobbledygook like it's it's like fucking shopping list for groceries or something like that but um it's helped me over the years and especially with the podcast i just if i fill up a page i'm like time to do an episode and then i just bullet point this shit and i fucking talk about it like i'm doing today so uh where did we leave off about idaho anyway so you've all heard me talk about fucking Washington and its homeless population and how fucking crazy it is. And I have whole episodes talking about what the fuck do we do about homeless population? My solution, and I hold up to this day, what do we do about those fucking people? You take a bulldozer, you rent it from Lowe's or Home Depot or something. They have excellent rates, you know, <clears throat> daily rates for their backhoes. You take that down to the Puget Sound and you just push all those fucking people into there. Um, I guess that's a violation of human rights, but I don't fucking care because this is a made up situation and I can fucking kill all of the people I want in my mind. Okay. Can't go to jail for that. Uh, I'm not inciting violence. Like to think that someone's going to go do that with a bulldozer. Fuck. I'm sorry if they do it, <laughs> but you have to make the decision right now. Are you, am I liable for that? No. Because you went to the added effort of going to fucking Home Depot or Lowe's and getting their their finely, uh, you know, finely fucking rated, uh, daily rated backhoes and pushing homeless people. You're only going to get one of them, all right? You're not going to get a whole the whole fucking thing. There's no, like, 20 fucking f foot wide backhoe that you're renting from Lowe's or Home Depot, you know? But anyway, I said I set myself, as soon as I fucking, and this is like anything, anytime I've been on a trip, I'm like one of those people that... 
It's hard. To, I can't. I hate saying goodbye to people. You know, I hate saying goodbye. I took my buddy Mark that you have seen on this podcast out to a fucking nice Buffalo Wild Wings dinner that cost $150 because our eyes were bigger than our stomachs and we ate about two of the things. I think the but the fucking best thing was the fucking mozzarella cheese sticks. Mwah! They're fucking delicious. You know, you take you could fucking ask anybody on a given day and be like, "Hey man, you want to eat a whole package of fucking mozzarella cheese sticks?" Like the fucking string cheese and they'd be like, "No, I'll have like one." But you go, but I'll take that and fucking deep fat fry it with fucking bread on the outside. Be like, give me fucking 20 of them. But I brought, I brought, I brought my buddy out. I tried to invite David, but he was doing something else. Very important. He was uh, visiting with his children. So I can't knock him for that. Uh, It's very respectful. Uh, I brought Mark and my son out for a fucking nice, uh, I wish it could have been a seafood dinner, but I brought him out to a nice fucking chicken wing dinner and we got everything. They... The, the fucking spread of this fucking thing. Good Lord. We got everything on the menu. They had some weird burgers. I got a burger at Buffalo Wild Wings. You never fucking see that. They got fantastic burgers. Uh, they also got other fucking fantastic shit. But the whole fucking table was filled up with appetizers. Getting them apps up in this bitch. And it was wonderful. And we saved them. And I think I threw half of the shit out. Because $150 worth of Buffalo Wild Wings is a lot of fucking fucking garbage food. Which I am a fan for, fan of. You know? You may have heard me talk about microwavable fucking burritos or whatever. Not burritos. Microwavable grilled cheeses. Anyway. Uh, left Washington. Oh, oh so... I'm not good at goodbyes. Like, and if I've seen you for like two minutes, I'm like, oh, okay, goodbye. <laughs> like, I fucking, I hate it. And it doesn't matter. It's like, it's weird because I, it's not that it's like not seeing the person. It's like that, that I feel like I should be doing more or something. I don't, I don't know. It's a weird thing and a weird emotion, but it's not like I'm not going to see them again, but it's just, it's just, uh, it's one of those things. Not good with goodbyes on any level. Um, so I get Mark the Buffalo Wild Wings, the B-dubs, you know, and say our, our parting words, even though I know I'm going to see him again. And we're going to do podcasts. Still, we're working on, like, how are we how are we going to fucking do podcasts while I'm here, you know. So we're working those things out because I'm not really a fan of Skype, but it is what it is. It is what it is. Um, you know, and... and I'm le- let me just jump ahead. I'm I leave Washington and I'm on my way and I have this path clearly defined path that's you know, there's you know you you get on Google uh Google Maps or whatever and you do your like your driving directions it's like you could go this way. This is the quickest one to avoid traffic or you could take this one and it's 5 hours more. Like what the fuck am I doing that for? So I have this path that goes I can't remember exactly, but Washington Idaho, uh, whatever the next state is, Idaho, uh, Washington, Oregon, Idaho, uh, and then eventually through Salt Lake City, and that was my first stop of the trip. Along the way, and because I've talked about this uh, in great detail, I'm going to be driving through Wyoming, and I've never fucking seen the place, even though the OLP episodes, the fucking cult shit, all of the fucking t-shirts... And some of the content that you may have seen on other things where I reference it is from Wyoming. Like, like I say, um, like on the description of the podcast, it's like uh, the be- the best podcast this side of Wy- Sheridan, Wyoming, because that's kind of like where the uh, Claremont, Wyoming, that's where the OLP is uh, is is based out of right. Like from the story that we created way back with the Florida man crew. Um, so that's like on the fucking podcast description. If you look at it, it's like the number one podcast, this side of Claremont, Wyoming, just as like a a call back to those episodes because it was defining for the podcast and how it changed from being a interview type of thing to just like this silly, ridiculous shit. Um, and so I, I'm like, yes, I'm going through Wyoming. And I like, I kind of do like a Google thing of it, but I'm like, I'm going through Wyoming. This is going to be dope. 
but I could take a detour up to fucking Claremont and and because it's 126 miles north of fucking whatever. And um, but it's 126 miles north of whatever. And when it came down to it, it's like I got to drive to fucking Arkansas with all my shit, and that's 32 hours just if you drive straight. So I made the decision that I'm not gonna go to the place that I fucking did in the OLP. But what I discovered that there's very little about fucking Wyoming that's awesome. It is the one of the most barren places. It's why it's the lowest population in all of the United States. Um, no offense to anybody from Wyoming, but that place is fucking weird and it's very barren and there's nothing to do there. There was an Arby's. I went to an Arby's. Got some mozzarella sticks there too. And I may have a problem because I love mozzarella cheese sticks. But you wouldn't find me going to a fucking grocery store to go get a bag of cheese sticks without that bread and then that fry, that fat fry shit on there. You wouldn't find that. Um, so, but Wyoming, it's it's not that cool. But there is, it is Purple Mount, Mountain's majesty. And, you know, to some respect, that's that's beautiful. So I continue my journey because there's not much to talk about Wyoming. I just have a note right here to talk about it. Continue on. And, um, oh, I didn't, I didn't say this. I got to Oregon and I had a fucking flat tire cause I went to get an energy drink and I popped the shit and it was on Easter this past Easter Sunday and nothing's fucking open. So I was stranded in this very nice resort for 24 hours till my buddy Logan from ping pong tactical came out fucking hooked me up drove me and my tire to a fucking uh a, you know a fuck a fucking firestone tire not a shout out to firestone but a shout out to logan from ping pong tactical and when he drives me to that fucking tire shop you can use code viopro for fucking 15 percent off your order at pingpongtactical.com but he drove me there and we talked about all kind of Kydex and all kinds of deals you can get with Vio Pro at checkout. But uh, he helped me out and uh, drove me over there because I love that dude and he loves me. And one day we're going to have a magical baby that's going to be birth based on Dogecoin because we both are fucking uh, Doge uh, fucking uh, kingpins. We own a lot of it between both of us. So, got my tire fixed on the road. Thank you, Logan. Big shout out to you, buddy, bruddy. And uh, continued on my journey. Went through Wyoming. Uh, One of the coolest fucking things that I saw while I was out there on the road, which there wasn't much because after I lost a day of travel, I just was doing fucking, I think I did 13 hours. Um... I think 13 hours to get from where I was to get to Salt Lake City. And I got there at like 1 a.m. or some shit. Um, And then in the morning, I kind of took my time. I went and got some food and like drove around Wyoming to see what all the rate or not Wyoming to uh, Salt Lake City to be like uh, to see like it's amazing what Mormons can build. (laughs) Like you put your mind to it. You have a a big enough cult. You can do amazing things because Salt Lake City is a pretty beautiful place. Um, And, uh, you know, uh, was like shocked at what it looked like because I never looked at pictures of Salt Lake City. You just see the mountains and shit. But I was like, this is actually a really well put together place. Drove past the fucking, uh, you know, the the building of uh, John Smith or whatever. And I was like, this is fucking cool. Um, It's a city, obviously, and I'm not like a city person. So I wasn't like too into the city but as far as the accomplishment of making that place and i don't know if it was made by mormons but it sure is ha- like the fucking what you think about salt lake city is fucking run by the mormon mafia and it's like, it's a cult in its own right so because i'm into cults shit it's like oh this is fucking cool um but anyway continuing on my journey and going across the country one of the coolest things i saw was and i'm not into weather or anything like that but once i got to uh oklahoma um and it was like my last, I was just getting into Oklahoma. Um, it was weird. Like, I'll go back to when I got into Colorado. It was weird. It's like as soon, I know, like the, the scenery and the terrain looked a certain way. And then as soon as I got to fucking Colorado, it was like the state line. It was like the sign. It was like, welcome to Colorado. It was like the terrain and everything changed. And maybe you know what I'm talking about. You've driven in from the north. 
and you've gotten across the state line from what the fuck is north of there? I don't know. It's fucking north. I'm not, not thinking clearly right now, but crossing the state line into Colorado, it was like a dramatic, like somebody painted this shit. Like this is the state of Colorado. It's going to look a certain way. And that's kind of what happened. The road changed, the fucking mountains changed into something else. There was different vegetation and whatnot. Um, but yeah, the, we're going into Oklahoma and I just got into Oklahoma on my last leg and I had six hours. My last stop was, it was a 15 hour drive. 15 plus hour drive to get to Oklahoma. And then it, it in the hotel that I was staying, at was six hours away from the house uh, that I'm in. And, and so I finally got to the hotel, but along the way it was a, this, it was dark as fuck out, like no moon, no illumination. And I'm driving on this highway and you can't see it because everything's so black minus the the uh the headlights. But there's windmills, like giant fucking windmills that are lining like f- this flat ass field. Like and I mean like hundreds of them and you can't see it. But every so often this ridiculous fucking uh, lightning bolt would shoot down like all over the place, like not just one but like brrr! And it would light up the fucking fields behind the windmills. And it was like, it sounds lame as fuck now that I'm saying it, but it like at the time it was like, you couldn't see like the color of the windmills, but they were turning obviously like Oklahoma's pretty windy place. And you would see like these black silhouettes of hundreds of fucking windmills. Some were like right by the road and it was just like ominous, like black, but it just, it was like the coolest fucking thing that I didn't expect. You know, like when you see like something that you don't expect to happen, it's like, you know, it's like you're in awe of it. It's like, wow, these things are fucking massive. And honestly, like I'm saying it, but it's like not really cool. Like it's a windmill, but at that given time with the fucking lighting and the lightning and stuff like that, it was just like, whoa, that's super dope. And And I just remember that was like, again, sounds lame, but it was like one of the most memorable fucking things that I saw along the way because I was literally just trekking across the country as fast as I can to get to Arkansas from Washington in four days or three days. It's easy. If you do eight hours a day, it's, I think it's a little bit more doable, but for me, a person that just wants to get where I'm going, like I couldn't do that, especially with losing a day. I could have taken extra time. I had a whole week to get here, but I decided to do it in four days originally. And then after, and essentially I was only a couple hours away from my house in Washington, but because I lost that day, I was like, you're fucking going across. There was, there was a time where I was like, I'm going to drive 24 hours. Like that's so fucking dumb. But I, I thought that I was like, I'm going to drive 24 hours, get across this fuck. I'm going to get to fucking Arkansas. I'm going to get there. And, uh, And obviously, like, you get so tired, but I think there would have been cooler stuff than fucking windmills. (laughs) You got to you got to look at it like this. The windmills were completely black spinning. And the only thing that showed them is the fucking lightning bolts. It was dope as fuck. (laughs) Uh, But if if I had more time or I wasn't stopped with a fucking flat tire at one point, um, I may have looked at more stuff, but. I remember Salt Lake City and fucking uh and fucking windmills. And here I am. I finally got here. And I'm gonna get into what what I've discovered here. And that I posted a few pictures and people are like, I've only thought about fucking brothers fucking their cousins with <laughs> like if you think of Arkansas. I guess, yeah. Here's what I know about Arkansas before coming here is that Arkansas is in the South. It's not the Midwest. And I can't believe that people even consider that it's Midwest. Like where the fuck are you? Are you thinking Kansas? You thinking Kansas? You thinking Kansas? I'm thinking Arkansas. It's that place that kind of copies other people's names. And that becomes obvious when you're here because there's a lot of places, a lot of cities and a lot of towns that, that like combine Arkansas with other places. I'll give you an example. There's a place called Philadelphia. There's also a place called Arkansas. They've got a town called Arkadelphia. Like, <laughs> the fuck is that? Uh, let's take it a step further. There's a place called Oklahoma. There's a place called Arkansas. Arklahoma. Like, <laughs> uh, there's a place called Texas. There's a place called 
uh, Arkansas, there's a place called Texarkana. Like, what the fuck? And maybe that's not a good example because Arcana, Texarkana, Texarsaws, maybe. You, you get the idea. There's a whole fucking play, bunch of places. Uh, for example, there's a place called Arkansas City. Uh, there's a call, place called West, West Memphis. They're not very creative here as far as their town names. Um, but it's, it is what it, it is what it fucking is. Uh, so anyway, that's what I noticed a few weeks being here. Um, also what I noticed is there's a huge, huge fucking mountain bike community and biking community in general. They have amazing fucking trails here. They have amazing fucking mountain bike trails uh, in this uh, this state. You know, it's called Arcan- Arkansas. It's called the natural state. That's the fucking motto of this place or whatever the fucking tagline or whatever the fuck they call it here. Um, what you would call it. The, the fucking state motto. It's called the natural state. It's because they don't fuck with nature too much. The only time they really fuck with it is to make dope ass shit like fucking kayak parks in a fucking river where you can fucking go down these fucking ledges and they've got a nice path they built so you can walk your fucking happy ass in your kayak back to the top so you can do more dope shit. Their fucking mountain bike trails are fucking phenomenal. I I didn't even know mountain biking was huge here. And I'm, in fact, I'm not like huge into mountain biking, but just being here, I'll tell you what, I'm buying a mountain bike because I'm like, this is dope as fuck. Like they literally take boulders and make fucking ramps on these trails with waterfalls cascading you drive under waterfalls in this fucking pristine uh hillside you know one of the things they call them mountains here they call them mountain whatever but they're not real mountains i mean technically based on the elevation they're mountains but if you go to like washington narnia they've got those are fucking mountains uh colorado mountains but here they do what they can you know not knocking them they do what they can the uh what else i like about it is there's so much fucking to do outdoors including get ticks all over your fucking body but you just brush that shit off you know um you you, if you have a dog here you gotta fucking spray him with anti-tick stuff like uh, that's something we don't deal uh, with that much in washington is ticks and here they've got fucking ticks. You look at the grass, you got ticks. You know? It's a good excuse to fucking walk outside with your loved ones and go, hey, let me check you for ticks. And then you fucking pretend like they got ticks and stick your finger in their booty hole. That's how it goes. You gotta take all your clothes off, bend over, check out that fucking the fucking chocolate starfish, and look for ticks. But then maybe you put your tongue in there. You know, get a little bit of that action. And then you you know, you're having a good time with your lady on a Sunday. Um, what I also noticed about this place, speaking of Sunday, is they don't sell alcohol anywhere on a fucking Sunday. I'm sure there's some exception if you go to the hotel or something like that, because it's kind of an international deal. You go to the Hojo or the fucking Holiday Inn. Uh, they might have it because of their business travelers that come here. Uh, but they don't sell alcohol here. They also stop selling it at fucking 10 PM or some, some weird. I've had to drive, including tonight, and go across county lines because guess what? I'm in a fucking dry county. That's something I didn't even know existed. <laughs> Until I got here, I'm like, wait a second. I can't just go to the fucking gas station to get beer. I've got to drive 20 minutes to go get beer and smuggle it in like I'm some fucking criminal. Um, so that's interesting. Um, I discovered they have fucking tornadoes here. The fucking, like, last week we had a fucking tornado that was like, hey, my phone blew up. The fucking radio was like, everybody get inside and fucking go away from the windows because you might be killed by a fucking lawn chair. Uh, we didn't have internet for two days. The fucking power was out. Found out we're in Tornado Alley. Great move on my part. I've never even seen a fucking tornado. Uh, I've, I watched the wizard of Oz and that was the closest I ever got to it. And the fucking first month I'm here, I got a fucking tornado that's blowing down power lines and shit. Three miles North of here where we currently, why are you, where are you watching this? Three miles North fucking catastrophic. Uh, you know, trees apparently eat trampolines from your neighbors, put it up in a fucking tree. Uh, <laughs> it's like if we're in tornado alley, why do you have a trampoline? Because it's fun, but also imagine jumping on a trampoline while a fucking while Dorothy's trying to bring you to Oz. 
That could be wild. But we had 90 mile per hour winds. I had fucking trash smashing upon my fucking garage door. I didn't know what was happening because I've never been in one. I was like, what's happening? Um, that's what I discovered about this place. Uh, also, also, let me bring it back to Washington. You've heard me talk about HOAs and how much I hate them and how those busy bodies fucking put their business inside, inside of you. Fucking, oh, you, you gutters have a little bit of moss on them. Fucking $150 fine just because we said so. And if you don't pay it, we'll foreclose on your house. <laughs> Fuck. Uh, they, they, they mind their business here, which is great. You don't really hear people talk about politics. Uh, there's no mask mandate in this fucking state. One of the first states, you know, they talk about Texas, but they fucking don't have it here. Guess what? Cases are going down. Everyone seems to not give a fuck about that fucking thing that's going on. I met a neighbor today and he's like, you guys were wearing masks the whole time. He's like, I didn't put a mask on the entire fucking pandemic. I was like, Jesus Christ. There's places like this that do exist. It's not because I don't believe that people are getting sick. It's because I don't believe that people are getting fucking sick. No, I'm just kidding. Um, I I have said I probably had COVID at one point. Um, and even very recently because I've been, I've had to wear masks to get fucking food in Washington. Um, but here there's no mask mandate. So I choose not to wear one because I probably have already had it much like many of you have already had it. Uh, and the the whole logical thing about like, uh, you, you fucking may have had it. Let's say you did have it, but they still want you to wear a mask afterwards. This defeats all fucking logic as far as biology that we learned from fucking day one in school. Uh, so yeah, no mask mandate here. That's dope. Uh, and just I'm not really one of those people that go out of my way to fucking introduce my people that myself to people, but. One of the last episodes where I talk about the fucking Taco Bell dude that is the only person I've been annoyed with. Um, everyone is generally very nice here, unless you go to a place called Fayetteville, fucking Arkansas, and that's like this blue dot in a fucking Red Sea. Um, and those are some judgy motherfuckers up there. And that's a whole nother story. I don't even want to get into it. <laughs> Uncana is a CBD company. Uh, they make all kinds of CBD products which help people get over shit like anxiety, aches and pains, and general bullshit of the world. Uncana takes the edge off of life. Everybody's talking about CBD. There's a lot of great companies out there. But if I'm going to pick a company to put in my fucking body, I'm going to choose Uncana. You know, you go to Uncana.com, you use code VIOPRO, you get 25% off of your, all of the CBD products. At least go there and research. They got plenty of information, some fact sheets, the data on how pure and safe their product truly is. What do you have to lose, kids? Go check it out on Canada.com and make sure you use ViOPro at checkout for 25% off your entire order of CBD. What I'll say because I could give you many more examples of why I think this place is awesome. I just think that just the general nice people in the area that don't really give a fuck to know or put themselves into your personal space uh, to, to be like, oh, your trash can's a little bit out of the fucking outside of the fucking thing. Let's give you a $150 fine. Like, um, I don't want to know about you, but I'm going to look through your windows to see what's going on and just like, just so they could judge you. That doesn't really happen here. Like people are generally nice and welcoming and I'm not like me as a person. I'm not really into fucking meeting people, but I'm not like it's been welcoming here, uh, talking to people and telling them about myself when they ask. And you know, they like, it's, it's a super welcoming place. And I've had, you know, back and forth on this about why that is in the South and all that stuff that you can, but from my perspective right now, it's a, it's a great place. Uh, you know, you never really hear about Arkansas and I think it's very much like the Boise effect. So if you know about Boise and you've been there, or spent any significant amount of time, it's one of those places where you're like, 
I've only seen it and heard about it because it's a fucking place. It's like one of the big cities in, in Idaho. But you go there and you're like, this place is dope as fuck. And you enjoy spending your time there. You're like, why don't more people live here? And then you find out that Californians found out about it. And now they're destroying the place. They're bringing their fucking ideology up there. But um, Arkansas is one of those places that sits in the middle of a bunch of really awesome states. Like Tennessee, uh, Oklahoma, maybe. <laughs> you know, like Illinois. Uh, you know, all the surrounding states, you got fucking, uh, Louise, Louisiana down there. And it's, it's one of the, those play, those states that kind of gets lost in all of the fucking, all of the other states, right? There's 50 of them. And now there's going to be like 51 maybe, but, um, like Arkansas is one of those places that you've heard of, but you've never really seen. And so this, this, uh, one of my I gotta be real. This this lady, this nice lady, I've been talking to, uh, who's from here in Arkansas. Um, she described the place like a like a uh, and maybe I'm butchering this, so please don't fucking don't at me, bro. Um, she described it as like the diner, the hole in the wall diner that like you look at from the outward perspective, and the outside looks real shitty. <laughs> And Arkansas doesn't look shitty. Don't get me wrong. It's a fucking beautiful state. And I mean that wholeheartedly. It's a fucking... You get in here and you're like, holy fuck, this place is awesome. Um, But it's like... It, a metaphor, metaphorically, it's like that hole in the wall, wall diner that you drive by and you're like, I've heard of that place, like, but I'm not going to go in there. And you, you, you see it every day on your fucking commute and you've heard of it and you're just like, I'm not going to go in there. And, it, and it's like, it, they, they don't really... You know, from our perspective, no one's promoting it. They're just like, yeah, I ate there one time. It was all right, you know. And um, and you know the name. You've seen it because it's in the neighborhood. But you you just never stopped. And so you're like, you just assume. You're like, ah, there's nothing good there. It's just a generic looking fucking place. It's in the, you know, it's over there, south side of town. And you're just whatever. Um, but then one does, one day you're like, you know, I've I've seen this enough. And you're just like, I'll go there. Let's go there. And, you know, you're like, I'll get the omelet. And then, lo and behold, it's the most fucking amazing omelet ever. And you're like, God damn. And you tell other people, you're like, I went to this fucking place. I went to the Arkansas diner. And it was the most amazing fucking omelet ever. No, I'm telling you. And you're like, buddy's like, I've seen that place. It, yeah, cool. Yeah, it's like great. And you're like telling everybody, you're like, this place is, it has the best fucking food. Like, and then your buddy's like, yeah, but no one ever talks about it. Like, you're the first one. I don't believe you. And you you still, you go back day in and you're like, dude, I just went there. They got the fucking best tamales. You're like, there's no way they got fucking good tamales. They make omelets. And you're like, there's no fucking way. And so she equated it to essentially like the hole in the wall diner that you've heard of, but you've never really gone in. But the food's actually amazing. And I felt like that was the most amazing fucking analogy of this place because until you go into that diner and fucking eat the food for yourself, you won't know how awesome it is because it's so generic when you actually think about it. Um, so thank you for that analogy, Miss Lay, Miss Miss Lady, and uh, and I believe that wholeheartedly that this this place is awesome once you give it a chance, and I I love it here. Uh, for those of you that just that message me and be like, I only thought people f like brothers fuck their sisters there. You're thinking of West Virginia, you fucking idiots. Arkansas is a super awesome place. I love it here. Uh, one of the one of the things I noticed that I, uh, this is this is kind of off topic, but this is just like general fucking stuff that you see, and you can hear this anyway. I was thinking of it like I'm driving around and listening to local radio. Uh, to hear about events and stuff like that. And one of the, uh, like there was a, I'm listening to local radio and you, you know, you've heard this before and this goes for any place, but radio DJs talk in a certain way. It's like kind of how I did the intro for this video is like, Vila professional podcast. Dang it. Like you just do this fucking fake ass voice, radio voice. Right. And uh, there's this radio station in I think it's Fort Smith, which is right down the road from here. 
It's like it's a, actually a pretty big city. It, and not like massive. It's got 80,000, uh, a population 80,000, which back in Washington, I thought, well, we had 40,000 and 50,000 in uh, Olympia and Lacey. I thought that was, there was a lot of people just crammed in there. Um, and they're, they're essentially land masses, like kind of, I think bigger than Olympia and Lacey. Or no, Olympia and Lacey is bigger than Fort Smith proper and the suburbs or whatever but it's a it's a decent sized place maybe i'm wrong i don't know the the square the square mileage of the place but um yeah there's this dj there's like these things about there's like these pre-recorded things and it's like the standard fucking radio voice and like i thought it was funny because i've listened to it for a few days and i'm like um it's k-i-s-r so he goes the kisser <laughs> like why do they do that voice? Why don't they just talk fucking regular? But it's like, even while they're fucking talking to their friend, their fucking people on the radio, they're like, and then what happened? And it's like, imagine if like you're just walking down the street and you're like fucking going, Hey man, you got directions. He's like, well, you take a left at the fucking uh, Sunoco and take a right and go a mile. Like, it's, What? No one talks like that. First off. And Random ass people on the street would be fucking weird also. I think it would be fucking hilarious if there was somebody, if, he, if like a fucking radio dude can't stop doing it. Like he gets home, he's like, hey, Margaret, after we have dinner, maybe I could put my penis in you. And she's like, oh, yes. <laughs> it's got to affect your whole life if you talk like that. But I thought like I could I could do like a promo for the fucking podcast, be like ninety nine point nine the Death Cheetah, and have like a kitty cat growl or something like that. But they have like weird events and fucking promotions and shit like that, and it made me think of like car salespeople and like what they do, because my brain goes all over the place. Like car salespeople are very much like the fucking the radio DJs of sales. Like they do the same shit and it's like with everything. It's like the vocal depict like the vocal the physical vocal version of that would be and follow me here would be the balloons and the giant inflatable gorillas that they put on top of their fucking dealerships. You know what I mean? Like if you could turn a voice into a physical, tangible thing, it'd be like the balloons at fucking like car dealerships. It's like it doesn't make me want to be a part of it. It's like it's like the dude will uh, say some shit. He's like, hey, kids, you do you like giraffes. And it's like this weird fucking voice that they all do. K-I-S-R. <laughs> the kisser. Like who decided that in a meeting? It's like, well, we're going to take K-I-S-R and make it the kisser. Hey, kids, do you like pedophiles? Come on down to fucking Kyle's puzzle basement. Like fucking weird. Um, also what's creepy about fucking radio DJs as opposed to podcasters, what's weird about radio DJs. I don't know if, if from your hometowns or whatever, cause I remember back in New York and, uh, I'm originally from upstate New York, but not too upstate. Like I'm near like West point. So Poughkeepsie, New Paltz, Kingston, anybody know Cottekill, New York? That's where I, re- that's where originally. I was born in Connecticut, moved to, uh, New York when I was four. So, uh, but like they would have like, and it's super fucking creepy. If you think about it, radio DJs will do these like promotions for like teen night and shit. And these are like middle-aged dudes that are like, come on down to teen night. And they're like fucking remixing all these fucking like things. And And it was always weird. Like I look back at it, like we would have these nights where you could go to these fucking dance clubs where they serve alcohol in New York and like you have to wear different wristbands, right? You'd have to wear the different colored wristbands because you were under 18 or you were above 18. And if you were 21 and above, you could go get alcohol in these fucking places. It was just like this mix of like 14 to fuck. Cause that was the minimum is 14 to fucking 30. Think about that shit. And you would have radio DJs there fucking with their fucking like <laughs> thing like this. And they're like, Oh, what, what's the request? Oh, yeah, coming to the stage, Tiffany. And he's like, we're fucking having, what's the fucking bam bag? Boys to men. And it's like, and 
thing. He's got the fucking turntables and shit. And it's like a bunch of 14 year olds all the way up to 30. Like these old dudes in fucking sweaters just with their fucking margaritas and shit. Who has margaritas at a dance club? Let me fucking rephrase that. They got their fucking, their fucking martinis or whatever. <laughs> Stop it. All right. They have a, they have a fucking uh, vodka seven and they're just like, oh yeah. <laughs> like they're dancing at these fucking teen nights. That's what they would advertise it as. With these radio DJs that are fucking middle-aged just watching the shit like, just fucking taking their shit and they're like, Oh yeah, this next one, this next banger's coming up for all the ladies. It's like, there's a bunch of teenagers. <laughs> fucking crazy. And then you go, then you go to fucking car dealerships, right? You go to the fucking car dealerships. and They're basically the sell, same thing. These motherfuckers are selling you cars with gorillas inflatable. Like, like that's going to fucking do it with the fucking balloons that are just by the wind is going into traffic and shit. It's like. You look at the fucking car dealerships, you're like, wow, that's a lot of balloons. Maybe I should get a new car. And you fucking go there and like zombies, they pour out of a building trying to butt fuck you with fucking steel. Get you that hot new ride for the summer so you can take your family down to teen night. <laughs> Christ. Anyway, I got a little bit off the rails there, peeps, but I had a good time recording this episode. I appreciate you fucking hanging out. That's all I got for tonight. Um, if, if you enjoyed this episode, please give it a thumbs up or a comment or whatever the fuck you got on this. Hopefully I recorded correctly and it went to the actual recording device. Um, if you like this, please subscribe, help the podcast grow. You know, we've got subscribers on YouTube. You could check this out on any fucking given platform where you listen to your favorite podcast. I would truly appreciate it. And for the future of the podcast, if you want to help us grow even more, Provide financial support for as little as a dollar. You go to Patreon. You know, we're going to have some new episodes coming up that are Patreon exclusive, like full episodes coming up uh, that you'll be able to get there. And if you're a patron for as little as a dollar again, you get all the episodes as soon as we upload them, as soon as we edit. And even if we have got like 10 episodes lined up, you get all that shit as soon as your little fucking black heart desires. Uh, You know, and... uh, Yeah, we're going to do more podcasts. I say we. What a fucking crazy fucking thing. We. It's just me. (laughs) For right now. I'm going to get other people on the podcast. We've got, I've got three episodes planned uh, featuring me. um, And then a bunch of others where I'm going to be driving to go meet up with people in Texas, Florida. Uh, Some of the dudes from Florida, man. Jeremy, my buddy down there, we're going to do episodes. And uh, then we're going to do the Patreon exclusive with my buddies. Uh, from Washington and all over, over Skype or what, what have you. So, but with that, I appreciate you checking out this episode. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did again, give me a thumbs up, subscribe to it and tell your friends about it. Tell your friends about the violent professional podcast, putting out all of the fucking fire. And, uh, you know, the, the theme song and the outro song are so fucking dope. You might want to play them at your local team night. Peace guys. See you next time. I won't see you at all. Fuck.